Welcome to part four of our five-part series where we are modeling Lucky Lindy's iconic Spirit of St. Louis monoplane. We have the basic components of the aircraft modeled, and we are now ready to model in the unique landing gear and strut structures to the wing and tail. Let's start by unhiding our front view image and drawing a single reference sketch on the front plane. I'm just going to use a series of construction lines to draw a line through the center of each of these struts and the main landing gear strut. I'll then use the individual lines to construct reference planes in preparation for sweeping these various struts. Now let's start by modeling the main landing gear fairing using a sweep. Create a reference plane through the center of this fairing by going to Reference Geometry, Plane, and selecting the vertical line we sketched in the center of the fairing, and we will make it perpendicular to the front plane. This plane will be used to sketch the sweep path. Now create another plane that is coincident with this point at the top of the fairing and make it parallel to the top plane. This plane will be used to sketch the profile of our fairing. Let's sketch on this newly created side plane, and I'll hide the image and geometry I don't need for now, and unhide the side view image to sketch over. And I'll simply draw a few lines to designate the outline of the fairing. I want to make sure the top points of my lines are snapped to the horizontal plane we created for the profile sketch. Now let's sketch on the horizontal plane, and I'll sketch a soft aerofoil shape using the spline tool, constraining the handles to control the shape of my profile. and I'll just mirror this spline across a construction line. Exit this sketch and navigate to the swept boss slash base tool in the command manager. Our profile sketch is already highlighted. Now select the path sketch and this gives you a preview of the sweep. This fairing isn't going to merge to anything else at this point, so under options we can deselect the merge result option and click the green check mark to complete the operation. As you'll see, I've just swept the middle section of this fairing first, and now I'll use the dome tool to round the top and bottom faces. You'll find the dome tool under Insert, Features, Dome, and select the top face. We want to deselect Continuous Dome so that our dome ends up tangent to the adjacent faces of the fairing, and I'll set the height to 0.2 inches. And let's just repeat this operation on the bottom face of the fairing. Let's add the main landing gear strut to the bottom of this fairing using the revolve tool. Sketch on the vertical plane we created that goes through the center of the fairing, and I'll sketch a simple rectangle with the center line of our revolve going through the center of the wheel. I'll 
I'll go ahead and dimension this sketch to constrain it. Exit the sketch and navigate to the revolved boss slash base tool in the command manager. Simply click the line we sketched through the center of the wheel to revolve this sketch around that center line. And we have our main landing gear strut. Now let's run through the sweep tool once again for the main wing struts. Again, we'll start with a reference plane. First, select the line that we sketched through the center of the wing strut on our front view image, and then selecting the front plane to make this new plane perpendicular to the front plane. Let's sketch the sweep path on this plane, which we will line up visually using the imported side view image. And then we'll add several constraints and dimensions to make sure our paths intersect the wing, fuselage, and landing gear fairing appropriately. I'll also be adding this horizontal construction line to use to make the plane for our struts profile sketch. You'll notice I sketched the rear wing struts path using a construction line in the first sketch. I'll just create an additional sketch and convert this entity over for our other sweep. Now let's create another reference plane using the horizontal construction line we sketched in our path sketch and make it perpendicular to the path plane. Sketch on this new plane and draw our two profiles as equal ellipses, with the center point of the oval snapped to the end points of our path sketches. and I'll just set some equal relations to the minor and major axes of these ellipses. Let's enter the swept boss slash base tool through the command manager. Select the rear wing strut profile and then its associated path. Here's a quick tip if you have multiple sketches on top of each other. In this case we have a construction line from one sketch on top of the path sketch we want to choose. Right click on the top of the line you want to select and click on select other. This brings up a small box with the available selectable entities that lie under your mouse cursor. We want to select the line for our rear wing strut path. And there is our rear strut. 
So I will repeat this sweep operation for all of the remaining struts and I'll see you on the other side. Here we have all of our completed struts. I'll go ahead and combine all of these together using the combine tool in the command manager. And I want to blend all of these connections using the fillet tool. So let's set a simple 50 thousandths of an inch fillet at most of these connections. Where the wing struts meet the bottom of the wing, let's run through how to use the variable fillet tool. Enter the fillet tool as normal, and in the property manager, you'll find the variable fillet option under fillet type. Select that option and then select one of our edges to fill it. You'll notice in this case, four small red points pop up on the selected edge. You can set various dimensions at these control points. And keep in mind you have the option to adjust where these control points lie and you can remove or add additional points. And we'll just repeat that for the other wing strut, and I'll set a few dimensions in these control boxes to make my variable fill it. To wrap up part 4 of the series, I've noticed my rear strut is popping through the hollowed out cockpit area of the fuselage. We could use a lofted or swept cut to make a nice blended cut in this area, but instead let's use a much simpler surfacing tool to repair this spot. Under the surfaces tab in the command manager, navigate to delete face. First make sure the delete and patch option is selected, and then simply select the faces you'd like to delete. As you'll see, the unwanted faces have been removed and SolidWorks automatically created a curvature continuous patch. That wraps up part 4 of our series. Stay tuned for the fifth and final part of the series where we will create the other half of the Spirit of St. Louis and add in some of the final details.